You know, Chris, we don't give her enough credit, right? No. Hey, well, hello and welcome to another episode of Office Hours at the Microsoft Office 365 Hours, where we'll be discussing all things Microsoft 365 and answering questions from the community. My name is Christian Buckley. I'm an Office Apps and Services MVP and Microsoft Regional Director, and I'm also the Microsoft Go-To-Market Director at AvPoint. And joining me today on our panel here, Mike Nelson, Solution Architect with Peer Storage and a Cloud and Data Center Management MVP based in Appleton, Wisconsin. Hello, Mike. Uh, we have Hal Hostetler, our Senior Field Engineer with Roland Shore and Tower in Tucson, Arizona, it is like me, an Office Apps and Services MVP. We have Stacy Deer Stroll, an owner of Focal Point Solutions and organizer of this Cincinnati SharePoint uh, user group, and also an Office Apps and Services MVP. And we're joined also by Sherry Oswald, a Microsoft certified trainer and Microsoft Office Master. Ooh. Uh, and and co-founder of Power Up Learning in Colorado Springs, Colorado. 
And for our program today, for those that are new that are watching this, we'll be reviewing some of the latest uh, message center updates. We'll discuss a topic of kind of the news of the day, uh, and then we'll jump in to answer those questions that are coming from the community. So hello, everybody. Hello. 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 Well, it's good to see everybody. Ooh. And uh, and uh, we're I, I guess we're just ready to just, just jump right in. And if you're watching on one of the live streams, we'll, we'll, if, go over to the AppPoint LinkedIn page. You can find the live stream there. And you can post questions, and we'll try to answer them. We'll try to get to those. If we don't answer them tonight, we'll get them in the next uh, the the next time. Uh, but uh, you know, we your feedback is welcome over there, so for sure. And then um, why don't we kick things off by uh, jumping over to some of the message center updates? What's the latest, Mike? Sure. Um, so you mentioned that Sherry was the the office master, right? Of course, yes. So, so she'll so be able to she, answer everything correctly the first time asked. So we have no dis, we have no disclaimer for her. No, in right. other words, right? <laughs> Go, Sherry. So if there's no disclaimer, you know, then you know she can just take all the telephony questions as well. I think so. Oh, it is yes. Microsoft Office Master, not Microsoft Master. There's a whole other thing there. <laughs> Anything in the waffle. Let's say, let's put it that way. <laughs> and, and you know, I'm a master of none. It changes all the time. How can you master any of this when it keeps moving? So That's I get right. to learn new things all the time. I love it. Telephony is kind of part of the waffle. So watch what you say. Yep. <laughs> All right, let's uh, do a little bit of roundup on the uh, Windows, uh, the Microsoft Message Center. Um, I'm going to repeat a couple that we did this morning. If you watched the show this morning, you would have uh, heard us uh, talk about a few that were really interesting that came out. Um, so I'm going to start off with one that uh, really kind of got Sean going this morning, if you get to watch that show. But Outlook will be rolling out reactions uh, in uh, Outlook 365 for Android, iOS, and web and what that means is you'll be able to react to email messages with a like, a love, a laughter, a celebration, a surprise, or a sadness, believe it or not. Um, and <laughs> it was it was time, right? It had to come to that uh, where we can now, you know, <laughs> click makes, the like button. There's some, there's some emails that just make me sad. So that makes I know, sense. I know. Yeah. And frowny face. In yeah. my world, we call that the boo face. Look at oh. her giving the boo face. Yeah. Yes. I'm sure. Yeah. The only restriction on this, though, is that it has to be within the same tenant. So you like, if you really want to kind of, you know, there's not a flip off, uh, you know, <laughs> reaction, which I'd really like to have. But, you know, you can't do that to external users. You can only do it with the folks in your tenants. So, um, you know, maybe Microsoft will work on that. Uh, are we allowed to comment on these things you're you're bringing up? Of course, yes, sure. Oh my God, from an HR company owner perspective, I can't use them because they can be completely misinterpreted. And I, even though I really want to use them, I really, really can't. Yeah, yeah, that's probably that's, true for for some. She resorts, but I mean, she resorts to the giffies. I can attest to that. <laughs> yeah. So is that the same? Let me ask a question then. Is that the same with Teams? Because you can do reactions in Teams now. Uh, so, same thing with Teams. Yeah. I got I, I have to be very, very careful because any of it can be used against me, right? With a client okay. or an internal person. I have Giphy game. Sherry knows this. I have Giphy game, but I have to be very careful about my Giphy game. And I have a lot more disparity with my Giphy game than I do an emoji or you know a reaction per se and, and coming from a previous hr professional the the one finger salute would probably be not a good idea oh you gotta have it though <laughs> you gotta have it you i totally have agree your, it's the thought you, that counts mike it's sure, the thought sure, that counts <laughs> sure you can do you can do anything on your last day yeah oh, this, is, <laughs> this is true well, I, you know, I am a client that sent me a coffee mug in the the note in it so it had their logo on it and they said tilt the bottom up towards your screen as you're taking a drink and you know i'm just reading what they provided and i'm like doing this I'm like I, I don't really get what they're asking me to do um 
So I was on a call with him the day I got it, literally 10 minutes after I got this <laughs> mug, right? And I, you know, I just poured my, some Gatorade into it. And I was like, I'm like, hey, I got your mug. And they're like, oh, hey, clearly you don't know how to use it yet. I'm like, um, what do you mean? They're like, well, take a drink. So I take a drink and they can see my screen and there's a middle finger on the bottom of it. Right. And I'm like, mm. that's great for them. But I can't do that. <laughs> right. I mean, like, you know. I I want that. I just want to have like another, like a second, my, you know, I've got the one that has my beverage and then I just have the other one that's empty that I can use for those moments and slowly just fake yeah. drink, you know, so they, their, um, uh, their motto internal internally is we put the F U in fun. <laughs> I mean, I get yeah, it. Absolutely. Right? I get so, it. Well, like, like anything, I think it goes back to so the, the reactions, you know, like anything around the social capabilities, a lot and organizations that had a difficult time with like, we want to turn off the ability to add stickers and some of these, uh, you know, the emoticons as part of the chat. It's like, well, it's the culture of the organization, but you turn that stuff off automatically and you also then shut out what can be a, you know, powerful communication tool. Um and and to to get engagement in some of these sessions, especially to be able to see, yeah. No, I'm sorry, Christian. It is, especially in times like this when everyone's virtual, right? Or right. most of the people are virtual. You try and get your point across. Too many people are reading between the lines. Uh, you know, using Slack, using Teams, or whatever. And sometimes the icons can be, to your point, misinterpreted. But most of the time, they're like, "Hey, thumbs up! I like what you're doing," or check mark, or you know, kind of corny things like that, but it's easier than, hey, you know, typing it out and, right. and uh, you know, not being able to really communicate with people, you know, at a, at a personal level. So. Yeah, so, I mean, literally, I have, a, I have a, a game with one of my guys that I work with that we try to literally use Giphy's to write a complete sentence of what we're talking about. <laughs> I mean, like, it's a game, right? Yeah. You want, but, you want to know a real challenge, though? Use ASCII. Take out the ASCII charts and start creating ASCII characters out of periods and commas and question marks. That's that's hard. So funny thing is, is because I come from a development background and he is a developer, the guy that I do this with. Oh, yeah, we have done so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's... the thing is, it's not for everybody and not everybody understands it. And we have yeah. to be very, very careful. And that's the problem. Yeah. All right, uh, moving on, because Christian times me on this thing. And, you know, if I go over, he's really going to be upset about it. So uh, yeah. I, I want to talk about the uh, the other thing we talk, we mentioned this morning, which I still don't understand. I mean, we talked about it, and it still boggles my mind. Uh, Microsoft is now going to start enforcing mailbox receiving limits. And what that means is, is that I guess that they've never really enforced it. It's been kind of like uh, what they call us. Um, a, a soft limit. Um, and starting in April, uh, they are going to be more strictly enforcing the limits across all mailboxes. And the reasoning behind it is they're saying they're going to protect the health of the systems and ensure optimal mail flow performance for all customers. Now, okay, I can understand that. But there's another point to this I don't think that everybody gets is that they go on to say that mailboxes can receive high message volume in a short time, can cause mail flow delays you know, both for, you know, recipients and across the orgs. I get that. But now with the changes, emails are going to be throttled for recipients that exceed our published and established threshold of, get this, 3,600 messages per hour. Now, this is not, you know, it's not a new limit. They've never enforced it. But now all of a sudden they're saying, hey, you hit 3,600, we're cutting you off. Can, like can Sean I, said this morning, who gets 3,600 messages an hour? Can I venture said, like, I would be willing, Microsoft, Definitely. for you to throttle it down into the hundreds per hour. Yes. In <laughs> fact, if I could, if I could, you know, get maybe a couple dozen in an hour, that'd be fine with me, too. <laughs> throttle it, stretch it, spread it out. So, so I have to tell you, I go into a meeting for an hour and I come back, I'm like, I have 120 messages. Yeah. Could uh, is this really like yeah. normal, or could this not be restricted? 
I'm with you, Christian. But see, but Let's obviously wait. there are like, you know, look, there's support emails and, and others that are higher volume that are kind of shared mailbox and those kinds of things. And I understand those scenarios there that it's a reality that you can get that kind of volume and you sure. want to have some kind of performance controls around that. But just like any when there's a limit, when there's a throttle in place, there are always those special cases where, hey, this is a support. It's yep. this is our you know, our main, uh, you know, support at company XYZ, that's the main thing. And so we can't have that throttle. We need to get an exception for that. So I'm assuming that's going to be still a, a yeah, reality. Yeah, I, I mean, I, and I always thought that Microsoft had a, uh, and maybe it wasn't a, a written policy in place that, hey, if, you know, you can't really use us as an SMTP relay. You know, that's not what we want. You know, that's not what the service we're providing to do this relay for you. But people are getting rid of their exchange environments where they would set up relays, you know, for their, let's say they have a job system, that a batch system that runs all night long. And every time a job kicks off, it sends an email. And every time a job fails, it sends an email and, you know, everything else. Uh, for larger organizations, yeah, I could, I could see that. But why are they using Office 365 for that? Why are they using Outlook for that? That does, I mean... That, that that mail system was not made to handle that, number one. Number two, 3600 an hour? Yeah, <laughs> the thing is, is you can set policies on like, um, so like if you have a support email account, it's high priority. You can set high priority things, right, to come above other types of things, right? So there's, there's things that you can do. It's just uh, setting it as a blanket statement. I'm with you, Mike. This doesn't make no sense whatsoever. Yeah, no. especially especially since it was a soft limit, you know. Hey, we were yeah. really nice, you know. Yeah. For this many years, we've been nice guys about this, and yeah. you know, you know. But now we're really going to clamp down. That's and right. <laughs> we've been, we, it's it's been there, but we're not just gonna we're not gonna like limit it till now. So yeah. good luck. Uh, just you, prepare you yourselves. Right? So, our, yeah. our worlds are just gonna, going to change dramatically here, I, I suspect. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> well, if we can segue into our, our weekly topic and just take a couple minutes on this, because I, I don't think we can, you know, stretch it for, for a full 10 minutes here. <laughs> um, but it, it, it almost kind of fits into more of the message it, it updates. And that, of course, and it's the latest news. It's something, it's a hot topic. Of course, I'm talking about IE11 support. <laughs> well, so what seriously though, so back in August last year, um, PC Magazine had a, a an article um, about the retirement or the sunsetting of IE11. I and they PC Mag article, was retired and sunsetted. They, they, they said Microsoft tries to retire Internet Explorer 11 by pulling Microsoft 365 support. And so my first response was, you know, tries. No, no, they're they're retiring support. It's 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 happening. Uh, but one of the things that has been happening, of course, um, is, is that they uh, they remove support for uh, some of the uh, you know, Microsoft 365 applications and Teams happened. I think it was in November last year was the first uh, workload where they uh, degraded the experience if you use IE 11 and they were pushing people towards Edge. But of course, what's the latest news is that Edge is also being retired. Legacy Edge. Right. Legacy I'm just going to make it, you, well, you, you kind of jumped in before I made a statement. I'm not talking about. <laughs> I stole your thunder. Guitarist. I stole this thunder. The guitarist oh, Edge. Mike, oh no. no. Yeah, not not Edge and from the band U2. No. <laughs> yeah, but you're right. Classic Edge or Microsoft Edge Legacy. Not Chromium. Uh, is the accurate name. Not and the I didn't realize. The, 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 Edge that they built versus the one they they bought from uh, from from Chrome. Right, Legacy but I, but I didn't realize that that goes back to 2015. I, yeah. I really thought it was newer than that. Um, no, but it, that so no. it's you know it's just end of life. It's time to put it out to pasture. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's even more than dog years. Browser years are like you know 20 to one. Well, yeah, they made the switch to Canary. That yeah. was that was like four years ago when they switched over to Canary. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, the thing, I mean, the ultimate thing is August this year, IE is done, period, right? So you need to get your plan in process now because IE is not going to exist as of August, mid-August, I think, this year. Well, 
So, yeah, so the legacy support ends on March 9th. Yes, the legacy. But the ultimate is, I think, is like August 15th. 17th. 17th, 17th. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, right. 17th, right? So yeah. it's done. And I think it's great that they give that date because you don't have an option. You can't extend it. Well, but I think the issue is not not even that the support dates and knowing what that is or not, and you can communicate out. It's the... I mean, I expect this from from Apple, where they degrade the experience, where you don't understand why something's moving so slow or stopped working on your iPhone, and it's because of something they do trying to, uh, you know, peer pressure you into moving to the latest, greatest version or buying the new hardware. Um, but that's essentially what's happening with uh, with with Office, and that they're degrading this experience. So it is something that I, mean, I moved over to the, you know, Edge Chromium uh, early on, and I, you know, been very, very pleased with it for the most part. Isn't that what uh, they did though with like the Office apps? Is that if you didn't buy a, the uh, a full version of Office, they would degrade it. They would take features away. Eventually, even Windows 10, if you don't, if you don't buy Pro, it'll start taking features away and it'll degrade. Or update. Or update. Yeah. Even if you didn't play the updates, they were degrading the features. Yeah. Yes. Yep. This is this is nothing new to Microsoft. They 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 played this game before. And yeah. They, yeah. That's true. Yeah. Well, That's kind true. of like Safari. I mean, I don't know if you guys know. You know, you used to be able to add Safari to a Windows machine. That's been dis, uh, discontinued. You can no longer do so, and it's no longer really supported. And you can't use it. You can't use it to create multiple profiles because of the security risks. The only way to have multiple profiles like we do in Edge or IE or Chrome uh, or Google, right? Chrome is to, you know, we can easily do it there, but to do it in Safari, we actually have to create different profiles on the system itself. Right. And of course, Microsoft is pushing Edge and they, you know, they're, they're you know, part of the, the messaging there is, uh, you know, that, they, you know, using it in conjunction with Windows 10 it provides a more secure than Chrome option. So for the other the other browsers that are out there, and obviously you know, OEM is going to go and design. Microsoft is going to go and design you know features and capabilities. It will be more secure for their own products and services. Yeah, and they're white sense for that. So. They're white boxing a Google product. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, what I they're think doing. I agree with Mike. Honestly. <laughs> Whatever works, Mike. I'm I'm good with it. It's okay. You know um, me, although, I, I like to disagree with Mike, but I can't hear. Yeah, but what, what I say is the one caveat for me is as a WordPress blog owner is that uh, it's still uh, uh, Edge has problems with the uh, the cPanel. And, and so I have to use, that's like the main reason why I use uh, uh, Chrome is for that blog stuff. And I consume most other you know, sites and information over on, uh, you know, Edge Chromium. But yeah, so stuff, it's not perfect yet. Still working it out. So, yeah. you well, all right. And I have the, the issue in Chrome where you're trying to use the profile manager in Edge. It's still caching the credentials from another account login where Chrome seems to really help and isolate those credentials in each one of the pro profiles, but Edge still seemed to keep prompting me every time I moved to a new screen. Who do you want to log in as? Who do you want to log? Well, didn't I tell you that when I picked the tab? Come on. So, right. But yeah. the problem, but the problem, bigger problem with that is if you're, you, you know me, I love security and compliance. Uh, Christian always gives me flack for that type of stuff, right? But I love it. But because of that type of situation, um, a lot of times what you find is if you start another tab and you try to log in, that you will get blocked for so, because you're a risky user. Mm. And you literally have to log out of, out of all the tabs you're in and re-log in because it literally thinks that someone's trying to hack the account, right? <laughs> Which, from a consultant's point of view, it's like a love-hate relationship, right? Normal user within an organization probably is not going to have that issue. But from us, it's going to happen on a you know on a regular basis, and I think there needs to be some more tweaking yeah. around that kind of stuff. Because I mean, I've had just today, I had to go and release 
four of my users on a project they're working on because they were all locked because of the security risk issues. Yeah. So. Yep. The reality is the world we live in now. Yeah, I, right? I, 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 adjusting to your know, multi-factor authentication. I don't, don't even complain anymore when I try to do some activity and it sends the code to my phone. I just leave it right there. Yeah, no problem. Get in there and, and use it. But it's, uh, yeah, just yeah. where we are. Never are my phone and my computer more than a foot apart from each other yep. now, right? Yeah. Well, uh, let's move forward. Uh, and and this is a, we. it was a first. I think it's been a long time since it's been the case. But this morning, no homework. for. So we had no homework from last week Woot. to the evening Woot. session. So Woot. we're just spot on because I think a couple of them we just said, you know, punt. We don't know the answer. No, I don't want to take it for home. No, no, I think it we, depends. Or yeah, depends. Yeah, I think it depends. Covers a lot. I think that is the uh, the, yeah, the, the answer. It is lack of information. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Correct. That's really what we're talking about. Yeah. All right. So let's jump into the the questions. And again, these are questions that are coming out from various community sites. So we have a number of uh, teams and broader Microsoft 365 power platform community groups out on Facebook for the Microsoft tech community. And uh, so we're going to go through as many as we can. And if you have a question that you'd like this panel to try and address, you can go over to uh, LinkedIn. And if you're following us over there, but if you're watching us on Facebook or YouTube or Twitter, you can jump over to LinkedIn on the AvPoint page and jump in the conversation. We're monitoring questions there. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and serve up. So this was question eight from this morning, so our number one. Pablo asked, uh, if I rename a channel, so this is a Teams question, I imagine the underlying SharePoint name and URL remain the same, correct? Depends. Just pointers. Depends, right? So in, if you're renaming it from the SharePoint admin, you can rename the URL along with the name of the teams. And if you rename the URL to coincide with it, it automatically has a process that will go and rename all that for you so that the names can match up as closely as you want them to. So you can adjust. You can adjust the team's name individually and not update the URL as well. So it just depends on exactly what process you follow. That was a wish list item for years to enable that capability. Also, by the way, if we do have a legitimate it depends response to any question, do we all do jazz hands? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like a drinking game of sorts. So it's the. Aren't you supposed to be building a banner or something? The easy button? Uh, yeah, oh, we've talked about it. So that's a lot of effort. All right, uh, jumping into the next question. Um, Ines asked, uh, in my team's group SharePoint in the modern version a site, we want to create different lists that should be filled out from certain people of the organization. They should only be able to see the lists where they have to fill out information, but not the other lists, or at least not their content. How can this be managed? You know, we've had a variation of this question with lists and list vis visibility. So they want to... Uh, okay, so if I'm reading this correctly. Different lists. Different so, lists, but they want to serve them up in Teams or just in? So in, in the, my Teams group SharePoint, in the modern version of SharePoint. So, um, so. You you set the permissions on the list, so right. if, yeah. and, and right. preferably with permission groups and not person by person because Otherwise, now you're going to have to manage um, the the uh, permissions. Anytime somebody leaves or joins that site, you're going to have to go in and adjust those. So, right. But then, honestly, I mean, like, depends if it's teamified, right? If it's just a group site, right? So then you have people that are assigned to that group. If they need to um, facilitate information with inside that group, and they teamify it then they could add that list within the team and only provide those individuals information into that to that channel with that list yeah. and they'd not see everything else that's involved with that sharepoint the, the group site on the back end right yeah 
So it again, I'm going back to Christian's favorite thing. It depends. Yeah. On yeah. well, what, the way she asked the, the question, though, I'll do the jazz hands, partial <laughs> jazz hands. There, is that you know, it, uh, you know, working from SharePoint site? I said, yeah, that's a fairly you know, simple solution because as Sherry said right at the beginning, is that you know, permissions at the list level. The uh, question we've seen a couple times in the past was people were asking about, can I control permissions to a, like a line item to a row or to, you know, you had specific parts of a list. And the answer was no, because the permissions were at the list level. Mm. Well, actually, you can set the permissions at the item level as well, but that is tedious and ridiculous to maintain. The only, yeah. the only the other thing that I've done is created the me view and make that the only publicly available view and don't yeah. allow them to create their own right. views. So I'm a huge right. proponent of the me view. The thing that threw me off from the, the beginning was it said in my team's group SharePoint. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it's a team site, you groupify it, then you teamify it, right? Yes, but I, I read that as like the team's, the, the group SharePoint or the shared SharePoint. Yes, so but it might be yeah. D E A M apostrophe. It's, it's, yes, it's, that's what I'm I know. Yeah. Word, words matter. I know. I it, it, it <laughs> punctuation does, matters. <laughs> it does in this situation, big time, right? Yeah. Because you know, yeah, I can have a group site, but only in the team, only display a certain list to a certain people. Yep. So it really depends on what they're wanting to display or if they're displaying it only in teams or through the group site itself. It, it, it's, yep. it depends, right? Yeah. I'm, All right. Yeah. I, I'm there you go. You got my, you got my feedback. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, qu question 10 is another one that there was a feature that was developed around a part of this need here, but Ricky asks, is there a way to add and force force everyone in the organization to be part of a specific team and that alert, that alerts stay on. So everybody's part of this. So it's an entire organizational team and that alerts stay on. Well, you can create the, the org based team now, right? So it's right. an org wide team. I don't think you can force people to stay a part of it. They could leave if they want to correct well, me if I'm wrong. I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to being the devil's advocate. Are you talking about teams as the team's app or a team as the team site? Uh, teams, mm -hmm. the team's so app. Team, so the team's app. So in the team's app, it depends on what they're trying to to force. Because if it's a list under the you know in the site that they're supplying in, I mean that's all flow based, right? So if they want if they want uh, alerts to a certain point, I mean, everything comes back to a list, which alerts is out of the box. What I'd say, I mean, this, this scenario that I, I've seen where, you know, when they uh, uh, released the announcement capability within Teams, that was uh, one of the examples. Um, so we want to have an org-wide team and mm -hmm. that we want to use that to push out information and announcements to everybody in the organization. And so that's what I'm reading into this one. And I, of course, if I'm using this as my primary communication tool, I don't want people to be able to turn that off. So can I lock them in, get them into the team, keep them there, and then don't allow them to mute it or turn it off? Strap well, them to the chair with some duct tape and don't let them touch their keyboard. Right, yeah, I mean, because right. the alert, I mean alerts, when the person that, when the first, a, a person can set an alert and say, hey, it's attributed to this group. When the person goes in and they see their alert, uh, alerts to a site, there's like, oh, I, I'm a part of this group. At that part that they're assigned to from a group, I don't think they can, they, they cannot remove themselves from that group because it's a SharePoint group. They cannot remove themselves from that. So if someone says everybody in this group, this SharePoint group is getting this alert, they're going to get that alert. They cannot remove themselves from that. Unless someone else knows another way, they can't remove themselves. Well, well the other thing is, you know, I, I look at the organizational, the culture. Those people need to find value in what's being shared there. And if why are they shutting it off if it's something if they're providing value, they don't yeah, see value my, in it. But yeah. that's that's the philosophical, but I think <laughs> cultural this, question, not a technical I, answer. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you, Sherry, but my point of view is if I go out and I set an alert for an entire group, I'm like, 
So like I said, uh, you know, a group called FPS, you know, team. And I set that to uh, as an alert. So anybody in the FPS teams, even though you're part of that group, if you go into your alerts and you see that, you can't disable that because you're part of that group. You can't remove yourself from that group. You'd have to request to be removed from the group through the admin. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You can't you can't by nature just go remove yourself. Isn't all of this just resolved by assigning pagers to everyone? And and only the boss can send those pagers, those those alerts or those messages. That's what uh, I, I want to go back to that. Yeah. Right and true technology. <laughs> Did you say pagers? He said pagers. <laughs> he said it. He said it. No, 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 no. You, you wear a fanny pack yet? I bet you he still wears a fanny pack. <laughs> no, but I'll tell you, my youngest, that he he thinks it's cool. I keep telling him, no, it's not. And he wears it almost every single day, that fanny pack. <laughs> fanny packs are cool again, I'm telling no, you. I went, no, I went to Disney about a month ago, and everybody, they're all wearing fanny cool. packs. They're selling them in the Disney Anyone store. Anyone within the sound of my voice, they're <laughs> not cool. It's like for those 30 seconds in the mid 90s when they tried to bring back bell bottoms. Like, no. My no. daughter has a pair of flare jeans and she sends me a picture. I'm like, you just bought bell bottom pants. Like, yeah. those are the ones I look back oh. on my childhood pictures and go, what the heck was my mother thinking? So that right. and the plaid so, yeah, shirts. I, and before we went into this whole the Partridge family, family fabric, yes, that's yeah. right. Before I went to this whole COVID thing, I was at an event where I was a speaker for in Minnesota. I'm not going to name the event. It was not the SharePoint Saturday, so Sarah's good to go, right? But an event I did in Minnesota, and one of the things that like was in the pack for the speakers was a fanny pack, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not wearing that tomorrow. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. right. I'm like, we're in the 2020s at this point. I'm not wearing a fanny pack. Hey, Valo gave them out as their swag at Ignite at their party last yep. year. I still I, have it. I use it. I, I'm serious. I declined. I declined <laughs> that gift. Yes. Yes. Well, let's uh, jump on. So question, the next question here, Sharon asked, hi, is there a release date for Viva? I tried searching <laughs> notifications in the admin center, but it is not mentioned. Just wondering how quickly we need to prepare. When so did, that might be a few to, days old. How quickly you need to prepare. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Viva I isn't something ready. that I would say now, stay, now, be ready. <laughs> I would it's say not going to save your world. <laughs> so I, I think we're going to go back to the our meet our meeting last week, right, Christian? Yep. I've been playing with Viva yep. since the day it came out. Don't go play with it. That's all I can tell you. It's not there. Um, I'm paying the extra five dollars for a few licenses right now. And um, the only thing that it has allowed me to do right now is create a brand new site that doesn't really give me any instruction. I don't find any instructions. Some of the links are blank. Um, it's not there yet. Don't go spend the $5 a license right now. That's all I can tell you. Um, yeah. Me and another MVP were like hardcore into this to try because we have some clients, but like based off of the marketing, it sounds great something we totally want to use and I do want to use if it measures up to what the marketing says it's going to do but right now it has been released I've purchased the license it's not there it's not what everybody expects it is right now at the release um, give it some time I'm hoping it will meet the expectations of what has been released but right now it's not there well, Ignite's in like two and a half weeks. I bet you a bunch of stuff's going to come out then. Yeah, a yeah. bunch of stuff is going to happen with Ignite happening. We'll <laughs> learn more about it. I mean, the, the partners are gearing up. Uh, I mean, I know we are um, getting ready to provide trying, you know, workshops and and just a, there's a lot happening uh, out there. I know that within the content services program, there's a number of you know SI and ISV partners that are members of that. And, and so there's a there's a lot that's happening. Um, but like with anything new, and this isn't a, you know, toggle on, toggle off, off the shelf application. This is, you know, needs to be built in. There's a lot of prep work for it, a lot of uh, curation money. and management, and, you know, that in time to be spent. Yeah, money and time to yep. invest in building this out. 
It, so it, it's it's like remember when they announced Delve and everybody went and turned on Delve and everybody went and like there's nothing there. It's like yeah, it takes time and to and use it for it to learn and to pull right. things in. So yeah, you know, Viva uses a lot of that. You know the the cognitive services, a lot of the AI capability. You have to go and do a lot of you know a, a lot of effort building in the content and content types, but. It, it'll it, it's a it's a longer play game yeah and i've been in this for years so i'm i'm totally with it right i i know that things take some time but if someone was to ask me should i enable it now and kind of build with it i would have to say no because the day one that was released i got the license i got it implemented and i just don't have what i need um you know christian knows these these areas that people can get involved I would suggest get involved with them. Maybe, you know, we can see some things ahead of time. But um, I mean, if it's something that based off of the marketing that seems really great for your company, then just, I would say, kind of sit tight and don't spend the money until some of the real things are out there. Maybe after Ignite, that'd be a great time. But I can tell you right now, based off of me and, um, couple M MVPs as I work with every single day. It's just not there right now. I have a feeling it'll get there. Otherwise, the marketing wouldn't well, exist. Of course, it, it, it'll get there. It's, uh, yeah, like anything new is uh, make make the business case. Don't just go and, you know, uh, buy something because it's new and shiny and exciting. You know, that you have the business case behind it and do your homework. And, uh, yeah, uh, so there's there's nothing wrong with, with taking it slow and, and being intentional with technology. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm in a consultant world, so I try to get ahead of the game, but there's some things you just can't get ahead of. <laughs> uh, let's see, question, so it's marked as number three here, but the next one here, Mika asks, if we have an internal Teams meeting and the one of the attendees is a guest star who is talking at the beginning of our meeting, and then he, she leaves the meeting and we are continuing the meeting. Uh, the attendee is outside our organization. Is there any way to prevent uh, he, she to read meeting chat? I know there is meeting setting where you can disable chat or whole or after the meeting, but if the outsider opens the team's meeting during our meeting, he can read all the messages we're chatting about internal things. So, so you, you've invited somebody in, they're speaking <laughs> to it and they leave. I know we'll get into like the other, the, the, the issues, the technical issues I'm Hal's just... having a, a version of this. I know, but this is the, <laughs> so here's my first response to this. So you guys jump in. So if I have a meeting and I've invited external people to it, at the end of that meeting, if the, everybody, they all leave, I then don't, don't, as part of that same meeting, don't have discussions about intellectual property and things that I don't want those people to participate in. We will end that meeting and then go into a new discussion to have that private discussion. Does anybody else disagree with that strategy? No, either that or create a group chat, you know, that, that's off the side that is right. not involved in the meeting. Stacey, you disagree with that? No, I, so I maybe I agree with it. I, 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 Okay, maybe I should go back to what you exactly said. Um, I think there are only certain people, like after the meeting, like the organizers. So like after this, if we all needed to have a discussion, we didn't want anybody else to see, only us should be able to see it. Yeah, but I, so again, if we've created a workspace, mm -hmm. is what this is, and invited people into it, you have to understand that any of those people that you invited have access to any aspect of this. So if we want to have a discussion, even if they're not on screen, that's just the way the technology, it's, it's working right. as designed. Right, a collaboration, right? If there's something you want to maintain as private amongst our group, you know, we have a group of people that we yep. discuss this stuff with. We send questions, we prepare, we do homework, all that kind of stuff that we only want between us, then that should be private. Yeah, and so you do that by going into a private space. Exactly. You don't invite those other people. So it's a separate space yeah, as a side chat yeah. or as a new meeting. Or in Hal's case, even if he's invited, he's not allowed to chat with us. Ever. That's yeah. Correct. Ever. As a rule. <laughs> no matter how he gets invited. <laughs> so it would be nice. Like, it would be very interesting to see, like, a 
core group. So like in this type of scenario, we have a core group, right? Of people that are, 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 in, are in this event. And we have other people that are, um, you know, you know, reading our chats and blah, 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 right? In Teams. So like a core, so like people who are part of the core only communicate, um, you know, just like, you know, how you have the everyone or you can spe uh, specify who you want to send a chat yeah, like to. like in a webinar. Yeah, like when yeah. you have the chat in a webinar right. where you can send speakers only, organizers only kind of exactly. chat. I think it should be another option like that. Right. Yeah. Everybody core or, you know, type of scenario. You could do something like that, but it definitely you, they have to have uh, separation. See, do you have that separation in do you, that that ability in uh, live events? You do not. Because that is a webinar like that's a common feature in every other webinar platform. But for this type of collaboration, I don't think it's needed because the answer is you have a separate meeting or spin up a separate a private chat i mean if you're in a, if you've created teams for this then it's a separate channel for us versus everybody else right right, right. Uh, which i'm totally i am totally with in uh, okay. live events yeah you don't have that either um i'm going to go back to it depends on the requirements of the client but if it's something like this then I'm dead on, you know, you're dead on. You must have a private channel for people that are organizing versus everybody else. Right. Well, I think it's interesting because as a participant in a meeting, I can leave a chat. So that yeah. means you can kick somebody out and leave a meeting. Right. But it's interesting. I wonder if there's a way to kick somebody out, you know, of a meeting um, so that they can't see the chat anymore. You cannot. If they're already added, you can't make, you can't force them to leave after the fact. It's just not inviting them from the, be the beginning. Somehow it worked with us removing Hal. <laughs> yes, I can't chat either, so you removed me. So, hey. Well, those, the inside joke for everybody here is that <laughs> we're having, the, there's some, some technical issues with with teams and Hal's unable to participate in our chat. So that's the the running joke here. So. Yeah. For, for months. Poor, it's not poor funny Hal. to Hal, though. Yeah. So. According to no, Hal. What we, what we do know, that Christian has a little checkbox somewhere, and he's holding it over Hal's head to make sure that he doesn't check. He can't chat. Hey, hey, Hal, all I can say is as long as you can you can chat during our, uh, uh, our book club, I'm good. Yeah. Oh, no problem. That I can do. There you go. Sweet. See, I'm inclusive. Well, that's the thing of it is there, I'm in the right tenant too. Yep. And I think that this chat would be just absolutely fine if I were part of this tenant where the meeting is being held. In my case, this bug issue feature, whatever it is, <laughs> is a matter of me joining a meeting just as this is described as an outside guest, not part of the tenant. And, and in my case, as soon as I leave that meeting, or in this case, his star guest, as soon as that star guest leaves that meeting and that meeting ends, he's out. He can't come back in. At least I could not at this stage come back in and look at the chat. It just will say, we couldn't connect to your chat, to your, your service, and uh, what I'm seeing on my screen right this minute, which says you can't send messages because you are not a member of the chat. So. Sure. Interesting. You know, and that is a user voice interview. You know, there's like two user voice entries on that. Yeah. Well, that's, so, you were able not, the not first the one. one. So it, correct me if I'm wrong, Hal. The first time, because we set up this recurring team to run mm -hmm. these events. That first one, you saw the chat. Yeah. But once you left that. Then it didn't work. And the thing right. of it is, when you had yours set up, the, the, the prior version of this, on Facebook and the like that you were running, um, that was uh, I don't know which tenant, but that one then, back then, for most all of the meetings that we had, every time I would come back, it would be the entire chat history, which this fellow was looking to prevent, available to me. And then one day it stopped, and it has done nothing but remain ever since. And I mean. You can research that on the internet, and yep. uh, it's a it's a no. You know, a, lot a lot of people, people are asking are questions, that. and ain't nobody yep. got an answer for it yet. Yeah, yeah. And that's a, just for the for everybody too. Like when we experienced that, made no changes to it. it. Like literally nothing would change. It was the same recurring meeting for weeks that he had access to the chat. 
and then suddenly stopped having access to the chat with no changes. So yeah, turnabout's so fair play. They get to ask questions of us. Now we get to throw out questions to them. Maybe somebody right. out there in TV land will have will be like, "Yep, we experienced that too." So I can tell you the difference that I've experienced with this is each week so far I've been on the reoccurring event. I had to send Christian an email earlier and say, wait a minute, this is Wednesday. Don't we have an office hours tonight? And oh, by the way, I didn't get the collab talk for Friday. And so Christian forwarded it to me, but the previous weeks, it was automatically on my calendar. This week is was not, Christian had to forward it to me. This week is the first week that I've not been able to chat. I've been able to chat all the previous mm. weeks. This week I cannot. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Forward vers <laughs> versus being automatically on it. I don't know if that has anything to do about it, but there's some Probably. more info for you. Maybe. Hmm. Well, as, Chris yeah. as Christian would say, they're working on it. Yeah. It depends, <laughs> right? I sincerely hope so. That's what we just need to have the little working on it, the old working on it, the blue screen with the, the with the little spinning circle there, you know. Working no, on it. it's I told like I said this morning, the guys with the construction hats with the jackhammer <laughs> and the you know construction That's right. That's right. sign. But the yeah. same and all at the same end. So this will be solved and our website will be live <laughs> uh, in time for uh, uh December twenty eighteen. So we're good. Yeah. You know, you know, it's hey plant, you something know. to look forward to. And those construction guys are wearing fanny packs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when we start being able to see no, each other, no, we'll probably have been. like a, uh, a group like t-shirt made. Christian, you're great at these, right? T-shirts made with all these funny little things we come up with. So when we see each other, we, oh, oh hey, you're a part yeah. of that. There you go. All right, let's jump to the next question. Alfredo, uh, oh wait, no, Justin, the, the, this is a good question too. Uh, all of a sudden, suddenly, uh, uh, all uh, sudden office files and other files are being saved in OneDrive. Is there something I can turn off uh, so I can choose where I want to save files so they do not go directly to OneDrive? Thank you. So I just, I posted the two links in the chat for you because because I can. Um, sorry, Hal. Stacy, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can't. <laughs> um, yeah. Curse but I, Stacy. <laughs> Stacy called me out on mine the other day because I have 12 different profiles on my computer mm. and my and they're all syncing. They all started syncing the OneDrive and the and my desktop and my pictures and all of that from every single profile. So my C drive is all bloated because all of that content is you know, on my desktop is now and my my OneDrive is filling up. So I do, feel do you your have, pain. Do you have Justin. separate passports for each of those profiles, Jerry? Is I there do. something else that you want to tell us about your the, yes. the life you're living? If I you can't find me, I'm probably somewhere in Ireland under the name of uh, you know Sheree something a Sheree McFinn or something. I don't know, but um, <laughs> but the, uh, but yeah, it's painful. But I did. You can control. You can turn that off. It was a it was a feature that Microsoft turned on a few months ago. Yes, exactly. And um, so that it would automatically back up your desktop because I don't know about you. We Stacy and I have one client. I went out there and you couldn't even see the wallpaper. They had so much stuff. I said, you realize you know, this stuff that you have on your desktop, why do you keep it there? And they said, because it's my most important stuff. I said, you realize you put it in the most vulnerable place and that you can store it because somebody spills coffee or you get a power surge, all your most important stuff is gone, including, sir, the copy of your divorce papers. Your only copy of your divorce. Stacy knows what I'm talking about, <laughs> right? So when I showed them, if you go, if you put these in OneDrive and sync OneDrive, you are one folder away in your actual hard drive file structure from having it backed up versus not. And now Microsoft has turned that on, but you can go back and turn it off. And I put the two links in the chat for you. So all right, and we will provide those links in the in the write up to this as well, everybody. Yes. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. So the next one, uh, Alfredo. I'm sorry. I've got to. I've got to um, insert. We missed a question by Verli after sharing in between Micah. Verl. Verl. Thank you. Sorry. 
Oh, you're right. We did. Okay. Sorry, I just wanted to call that out. Cause okay. I I'll, 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 I'll go back up to Verl's question. Thank you. I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't chat it to you because I'm blocked. So, you know. <laughs> uh, by design. Oh, wait, no. Uh, Earl asked, um, when I want to attach my flow to a power app button, I get I get this error, fail during HTTP send request. What could the problem be? When I attach a flow to a power app button, I, I think it has some, and I saw this at one point, but I do not have an answer, but I experienced it too. It has something to do with the fact that it's being served from a web page. And the button action on the web page is not, is being blocked by the browser settings, if I remember correctly, but I may be wrong if nobody has a great answer right out of the game for that. Like the browser, you know, you, your settings in your browser has to allow you to do certain things, mm -hmm. serve up different mm -hmm. scripts, and it's not allowing it from that browser. So I would say try it from another browser and mm -hmm. see if that fixes it. Like, yeah. you know, Internet Explorer 11. <laughs> see if it fixes it. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. 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 so that, is, it, that is a very good way to go with it because it is also um, depends if it's part of a Canvas app or not as well. Right, because you can have a power app without a canvas app and vice versa, depending on how you do it. Um, but the if you're using a canvas app, fail during HTTP re, uh, send request is a very common issue. Um, and Christian, I actually, because I've seen this many times, I do have the URL on how this person could potentially fix this issue, but I can't like ping it to you. Can I email it to you? Email it to you or text me. Okay. <laughs> like, My pager is on. It's yeah, down this, the belt. You got your Blackberry? <laughs> that was a pager. Okay. So yeah. I'll send it to you because that is a very common error with Power Apps, especially if you're using Canvas apps, right? And there is a really nice blog um, around that that will most likely help this person with the issue that they're having. Okay. Um, yeah. You know, some of the, the more lower end stuff that, you know, Sherry's talking about, just like if you're not using a Canvas app, Sherry is dead on, right? But if you're using a Canvas app, this is most likely the problem. I'll send that to you so you can share it. Awesome. And, but Sherry, you do get extra points for um, the calling out once again, IE11. So congrats there. All right. Finally, Alfredo, who's been waiting just on the edge of his seat for his question to be asked. Oh, look at that. We're out of time. No, uh, Alfredo, <laughs> uh, is it possible to save sent emails from Outlook in SharePoint with Power Automate? I was starting to look to see if there was a template for that. I know you can automatically save attachments from an email. Yep. That's one of the out-of-the-box templates, but I don't know about sending an actual... He wants to do the MSG file, I'm guessing. Maybe. If yeah, he's that's to send surprising. MSG as in, in like the plain text email, no, based off of everything that I've seen. If correct, Sherry, the way you're looking at, and they're wanting to extract the uh, attachment, say into a list or whatnot, then absolutely you could use Power Automate for that. Uh, I would, we were, uh, my, my side of this, I would need a little bit more information to be able to provide a, a formal answer to this. Hmm. Need more requirements. There you go. So is that more jazz hands? That well, <laughs> depends. depends. Need more requirements is not a, yeah, you know, yeah. Need more requirements that, there. That sounds like a homework uh, uh, acceptance. From Sherry, not me. No, that's Power part. Automate. Remember, I don't, I, I, I don't code. I'm an ABC consultant. Anything but code. Oh. I'm sure there's a way to do it, and really smart people can figure it out. But uh, unless it's pretty much, if, unless it's a template, and I can I'll tweak a little it. bit. <laughs> I'll take it, Christian. Okay. All right. All right. Got that. All right. Uh, uh, time for one last one. Uh, let's see here, Tim asked, uh, having problems finding any information on how to upload images to the SharePoint app on your phone. 
There isn't an option as far as I can see. Anyone got a workaround? What SharePoint app? The part of the one that's part of off the office app? Well, there's a lot of SharePoint apps. I mean, just honestly, I'm like, depending if you like, if it's a, if you build a, it's a, if it's part of a power, uh, power automate or it's a SharePoint list or whatever, it, there's a lot of information missing here that we would need to know saying the SharePoint app is, you know, SharePoint app takes you to sites, which you can get to lists and you can upload stuff. That's just like it is in a, in SharePoint. If you're on your computer, on your phone, it looks identically the same, but he's saying SharePoint app, exactly what is he trying to do to a certain type of list, certain type of whatever, there would be a little bit more information we would need to know there. Yeah. Well, if it's a list, it doesn't support an you know, uh, attachment. You know, it's going to be an attachment. But if it's a document library or a picture library, then it might support. So it may be the type of list. Right. But even if you have a SharePoint list and you're filling out the form, right, and you upload attachment and the attachments on your phone, it'll attach it to that list. Right. But attachments have to be turned on on the SharePoint list. They have to be enabled, which, right? Which they are the, by default. Hopefully. Yeah, most people don't need to turn, you can turn that yeah. off. Everyone knows how to turn those off. So by yeah. default, those are turned on. So we would need a little bit more information around that, Christian. You have none? Just shake your head no. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, yes, it works, right? But it depends on exactly what he's wanting to do because that's just default, right? I mean, all the time right now, if I'm on my phone. Um, I mean, I know this is sad to say, 2 a.m. in my bed. I'm like, oh, crap, I forgot to send this, like, form. And I'll open up the list and I'll, you know, and I'll attach the form and I'll send it. And the flow just happens, right? That's all by default. I didn't do anything special. So. All right. Well, folks, we are out of time for this evening's session. And so thank you again, everybody, for participating. Uh, always a lot of fun. I enjoy these. I learn something. I get confused by other questions. I get <laughs> confused by the complexity of some of the responses. <laughs> I don't know what to do around those. So thank you for that as well. Where Maybe I, we can chat really, about it offline. And now, yeah, that's right. yeah, we we can text each other. Sherry. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> On your I SMS can, blackberries or whatever you that's use. Right. That I pulled out of my fanny pack. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just got to figure out how I get my IE 11 into my family pack with there my, you go. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> Christian, connection. my Google home just heard you say IE 11 and you don't <laughs> want to know what it just said, but okay. uh, All right. it heard you, it heard you. Well, thanks everybody for participating to, to Stacy, Hal, Mike, Sherry, and uh, we'll be back next week for another uh, APAC edition. So uh, you can find us, of course, every Wednesday at 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Pacific. And uh, we'll once again go through and share the latest uh, uh, you know, updates and news and answer your questions. So if you do have other questions, you can continue to post them out on uh, the LinkedIn site out in the app point page, and we'll uh, track those and add them into our uh, questions next week. So thanks a lot, everybody, and have a great evening. All right, thank you. Okay, bye. Stay warm. Yeah. Mm -hmm.